Welcome to another episode of the Design and Style Podcast. We are a podcast for designers, by designers. I am one of your co-hosts, Dixie, Dixie Willard Design. And with me, as always, is the beautiful, effervescent Rachel with Rachel Moriarty Interiors. And we wanted to say that the Design and Style Podcast is brought to you by the Visibility Lab. The Visibility Lab is the only membership group that focuses on the latest strategies and tools to help you get more visible while showcasing your specific brilliance. We've got weekly online office hours with both of us, monthly topics, in-depth worksheets, and exclusive monthly trainings. We are <laughs> uber excited. Yes. We are fan. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready to fangirl over. It's going to be, how are we going to control ourselves? We have... There may be some squeeze moments i'm just yes we have the grand dame kimberly Mm -hmm. selvin coming on the podcast and she is going to talk a little bit about her 15-step process um she has so many books she's she's amazing she's incredible so we are so excited to talk to her and we'll talk to you on the other side of the interview so we've just heard a little bit about kimberly but you know, it's not the same as you telling us in, in your own words. So let, I would like to start off with just knowing a little bit more about your journey. How did you get to where you are now? Wow. Um, so <laughs> I know, right? Um, like a lot of people, it wasn't my first career in interior design. My first career was television. So grew up in Los Angeles and you only have two career paths and one of them is working in television. So I was a producer uh, when I started out at ABC and when I um, met a wonderful man in Mexico, turned out he was Canadian, uh, ended up going to uh, Toronto to work on a movie and uh, stayed, decided that TV was a little too crazy. Like the pace was crazy, the budgets were crazy, the clients were crazy. So I was gonna do something really easy and gentle at like go shopping with people's money. Um, So I signed up for design classes and I loved them. And uh, I was an amazing student, I did really well in school. And then when I launched my own business, I got my butt handed to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in the worst possible, uh-huh. most embarrassing way. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's my story. That's how Okay, I got this is so crazy. I don't know if you knew, I was a photo stylist. So I started out in uh, advertising, photo styling on fashion sets. I met my husband, my f- husband was a photo assistant on the, on a fashion set. And then, you know, when you, when you're on um, location, you have like the production RV you know, craft services and all that. Right. His mother was the producer, <laughs> produced. So, and then his other brother was a, another photo assistant. So we all come out of the film industry. So that is so wild. That's so funny. And you have your mother-in-law. I could just hear your mother-in-law on the truck. Look over there. Look at her. What about her? I like yeah, her. Yeah, Go talk yeah. to her. <laughs> well, people who can do television production are really well suited to doing interior design because it's about that multitasking and fast yeah. pieces and everything is life and death, right? Yes. Like, you know, yes. if the pillow doesn't arrive on time, it's life and death. If the yes. You know, actor blows a line, it's life and death. So yes. it's training. Well, that's interesting because we were, I mean, we are just blown away by all the, the ways that, you know, we love visibility and all the ways that you show up for your business. No wonder you're so natural. I watch your TV spots or anything that you share on social media and I'm like, oh my gosh, how does she do this? So <laughs> you're just, I know that I, I'm a different version of myself when I know I'm being recorded. But when I am, when there is a set of people, you know, looking at me, I'm so, I'm used to being one of those people. I'm used to being the stylist and checking the hair and, you know, checking the clothes and stuff like that. I'm not used to be like being on the other side where I have all those people looking at me and I just, I just lock up. So I, no wonder you are so amazing because that's your so you seem background. supernatural. So does Dixie, like supernatural. From our, we or, we call ourselves awkward turtles. We love to be in our own homes. And there is oh nothing gosh. natural. <laughs> it has been a long, hard fight to get to where I am right now. Well, good for you guys for sharing that because I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who are saying, "I wish I could do a podcast, but I'm not brave enough." And you know, the reality is, you would just you were just crazy enough to try it. That's all. So good mm-hmm. for you. Congratulations! It's it. a great show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This has been the funnest 
journey because we both are solo firms. And so I had never wanted to even expand mine because freedom is such a value. And for some reason in my mind, like having a team or whatever means less freedom. I know people tell me, no, it's more, it's more freedom. Um, So it's so funny. I, I never thought I would we ended up turning on just our conversations and yeah. starting design and style. And it's been so much more fun. The energy that we create together yeah. uh, is really fun. So thank you. Thank you, you can't do you. this alone. There's no. no part of this business you should attempt to do alone. And, and uh, when you're a sole proprietor, that means you've got to think outside the box in terms of getting a posse, you mm-hmm. know, yes. so it's great. You found each other. It's good for all of us. So, yeah. Awesome. So, we love to talk about online and in person. We were just talking offline. You're going to Vegas market. I am. And, and what I wanted to talk about, I know you're doing a group. Aren't you doing a group in High Point? We're going to be in High Point in April too. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. We have to talk offline then about doing something with the group. Yeah, we have a group of about 35. We're sold out. Awesome. Um, oh. That's we thought, well, you know, maybe five people will sign up. We don't know. You know <laughs> That's like I, wrangling cats. 35 people. Oh my, 35 designers. 35 designers. <laughs> That's even better than 35 people. <laughs> 35 designers That's is pretty lot. cool. So we're working on an itinerary where we can uh, tackle the market, get a feel for what the market is like and how you can use it, and particularly how you can use those vendors to be more profitable, for sure. But we're going to also pepper it with some business of design learning and hoping to surprise and delight them and, you know, pepper them with alcohol and all those good things, too. So we would love to do something with you guys. That would be so fun. That would be amazing. I know. I know. We'll talk offline, but we're going to be at Chandra at Chandra Rugs on Saturday. So Okay. You mean... Saturday of High Point? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We, we're going to have that conversation. Out That'll be so, I want to meet <laughs> all your peeps. Yeah. They all want to meet you too. So I love, um, we always say Dixie focuses really on in person. She actually coaches me on in person. I can sit on my phone and talk all day long to anybody. Um, but I, I, need work on the in-person so if I if I act like an awkward turtle when you're there don't be surprised I'm like oh I I just like pop in my shell again like an armadillo I'm like as long as you're an authentic awkward turtle I really think that's what everybody wants you know most of the time you go to these industry events and it's all posturing and like how are you oh my god amazing how are your clients the best ever you know, um, when really what's happening is something very, very different. So I think, I think <laughs> as long as you're really, you know, Rachel or really Dixie. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I am so excited because we always say it in person is the gold standard. Like I've been following you for a while. You and I have known each other online. We've even had, you know, I've been on your podcast, you're on mine. And but that in person is like something something happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it just uh I love that. So I'm so excited to meet you in person. Yeah. Um so we wanted to go a little bit beyond visibility on this uh podcast and talk about your, how did you come up with your 15 step process? I was beaten how into submission. It's amazing. <laughs> um, nobody failed at this business more than me. I just, everything I did, I did wrong. And I did it like I so wanted to make my clients happy. Like it's all I wanted to do. I would do anything to make my clients happy. I worked evenings. I would work weekends. Uh, if they called me at Sunday night at 930, I would drop everything. I would show up. I mean, I always used to joke, if you want to sleep with my husband, that's fine. I can make that happen. I will do anything to make you happy. And yet I just was failing so miserably. Like, and I, I finally realized that I could keep trying, giving it my all, like pouring my heart and soul into it. I could keep trying, but I was going to keep failing. And so for me, it came to a, a real cr- uh, crossroads that I thought I'm going to quit um, having clients because at that time I had my own TV show on HGTV in Canada and I had, a, my phone was ringing off the hook and I was doing tons of media and I was making stupid, crazy money. I thought, I'm just going to quit the clients because that part's too hard. And obviously I will never get it. Like, because I would go to these industry parties and I would see other designers and I'm like, how, how are you doing? And they'd be like, Oh, amazing. And I'm like, I suck. Like, I really am sucking at this. So um, 
as a last ditch effort before I quit having clients, somebody suggested I phone a business coach. And I phoned that business coach thinking she was going to not be able to help me at all because um, I knew everything. You know, I was super famous. I have my own TV show. Like, I was the decorating editor of Style at Home magazine. Like, uh, you know, I just had it all. How, what was she going to teach me? And from the very first phone call, she said, you're doing everything wrong. Like every single thing you are doing is wrong. And if you will shut up, I can help you. So yeah. yeah. So it was, it was really, it was almost like breaking a horse. Like I was a really stubborn horse Oh my God. and she had to break down what I thought I knew one baby step at a time. So she didn't know 15, she didn't know what yeah. to do with me. Yeah. She just knew I was doing it wrong. So the steps just grew organically. Little by little, I would, we would create a system that made some aspect of the job easier. Um, answering the phone. How do you answer the phone? It's a, it's a stupid thing. I think you just answer the phone, but there's lots of things you can do on that phone call to get that person who's calling you as a potential customer to say yes. And I didn't know that. So we just, one little baby thing at a time, we tried to create systems that I could repeat so I would have success. And um, it's been about maybe 12 years um, that I started having success with clients. And, you know, now I have like 85% of my clients are repeat customers. Like that is, that's huge. Yeah. You know, it's huge Amazing. because before all my customers were like, uh, you know, you're great. And it looks we, pretty. It's so nice. Bye. We're just going to finish it ourselves. You know? I heard you call it, you got Canadian fired or something. Canadian like that. fired. Yes. So Canadian fired is like so nice. You don't even see it coming. It's like, Kimberly, we love you. And everything is so great. And we're just going to finish it ourselves. And, you know, I'm like, no, 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 but I have to add the artwork and the pillows and the throws and it's not done yet. Um, I don't know, Kimberly, like, it's okay. You've been so good at teaching us. We <laughs> and I would, I would leave and I would think, I would think, A, they're going to call me back because they're going to realize they can't do it without me, but they never called me back. Never. And it took me, honestly, it took me five or six years of getting Canadian fired. And I realized like, Oh my God, this is how Canadians fire people. Like by loving them right out the door. Like, Oh, we just love you. Bye. Bye. Run along. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I got sick of being Canadian fired. Yeah, it's true. That is, uh, the first time I heard you say that, I about died. That is hysterical. Because I have had to talk to designers and they've said, I think I got fired. Like, they really <laughs> don't realize. I'm like, yeah, I think you did, you know? <laughs> because it's not like, it's not like the clients think, oh, she's a jerk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's trying to make my life miserable. They could see that I was killing myself trying to make it work but when there are no systems and no timeline and no budget you can't there's no way to win yeah when designers go into the project and we're thinking like i i can see this beautiful space that i want in a magazine right like that's what i'm thinking like oh i i can't wait to see this in my portfolio what the client is thinking is how much and how long yeah that's all they're thinking yeah so i had to readjust my thinking to address how much and how long and then I could have as much fun as I want with, you know, making it visible. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to, I'm writing that little thing. <laughs> I'm like, how much and how long? That's all that matters. How much, how long? That's it. Two you questions. Know, how long does it take you? I'm, this is just like totally side thing. I mean, your books are beefy. Yeah, they're beefy. They are. <laughs> Oh but my they're, written, gosh. they're written really casually. Like they're not oh, hard to read. How they're long just... does it take you to write those? I mean, that is incredible. You, I mean, it is not a flimsy little workbook. It's like. No, no. The first one really was a decade. It took a decade because oh. when I first started writing it, I didn't have 15 steps. So every month I was working on new systems and new procedures. And so every month the book changed and it changed and it changed. And we finally thought, okay, we've got enough now. It's a really, it's a book. And then the second one was faster because by the time I started book number two, I had the 15 steps um, in order. 
And then the third one, it was pretty quick as well. Um, the, tr the hard part about number three, so for those of you who are listening, if you think, I'm just gonna buy the flat fee book because that's all, what I wanna do, you, you won't, it, you don't do that because yeah. you need the 15 steps or you can't yeah. do the flat fees because the yeah. flat fees are based on the 15 steps. So the hard thing about all of them was writing the books in such a way that the reader knows that I'm in the trenches with them. I'm doing exactly what you're doing for a living so I can give you lots of examples of stories that are happening right now this minute but I had to be aware that it's possible a client picks up the book and can read it so I couldn't say watch out for clients because you know they will do the following um, so I really had to be, be aware of my integrity writing the book that I want to like if a client picks it up they're going to hear that I want to make money and how is that going to, you know, how is that going to land with your customers? Well, the customers that work with me understand that I have to earn a living. Like I am doing this to make, um, to make money. There's no point in doing it if you're not making money. So, um, you know, and some of my clients have stumbled onto business of design and they're like, you're hardcore. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And that's why your project went so well. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they keep coming back. So, you know, they love the pain. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, I always say I, I'm not, see, I, that's why I love people like you because I'm such a creative and luckily to my benefit, I worked in private banking for almost 10 years. Yeah. So I can fall, I loved the processes because in banking, the turnover is so high. Like you could be gone and they, that next person needs to come in and the process are, so, you just go, oh, okay, that goes here. The correspondents go here. And this is, you know, the, they, they've got processes locked down so hard right. in banks and I can follow a process, but I cannot create processes. So God bless you for being that person <laughs> that can like actually like pick it apart because when I read the process, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, or maybe, yeah, I'll add that. Like trade day. I never thought, oh, just bang it out in like a day. You know, it's like, I'm always like, when can you be there? You know, there's like all these different times and all these different things. And, and then my first mistake when I heard about trade day is I had all of my trades there. And so we at the same time horrible. Oh God, like, yeah. <laughs> we had we're trying to do mill work, and the the, the homeowner's like, "What? I have the closet?" And then I'm like, "Windows." And I, I did the same oh, thing. I, I was I like, "I don't think thing. this is how it's supposed to look." <laughs> yeah. Trade day is so funny. That's I mean, it's every single system evolved at trying it twenty different ways, and then yeah. finally it worked, and we went, "Oh my God, that." that that work did you see that work I saw that work so we're like write that down quick so trade day um we, we didn't have a trade day we had multiple trade days yes and yes. it was exhausting to the clients like it yeah. just went on and on and on and on and then the first time the trade day happened I'm like I'm not I'm not the smartest designer in the room so right. what happened was I was going out of town and I had to squeeze in this trade day so I'm like we have to make it work one day, just this one time because of whatever. And then we did and we're like, oh my God, that was freaking <laughs> genius. The client was home and she's like, this is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. She goes, I, the client literally said to me, I can't get the dishwasher repairman to come to the house. And you just had 15 guys show up at my house on the same day. You're a rock star. High five. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that worked. Yeah. So believe me, nothing in, nothing in there was me going like, I have a genius idea. It was just me trying 28 things and them failing. And then the 29th thing worked. So, um, anyway, I'm excited what's happening to the industry though. There's all these cool people like you guys who are just paying it forward and it's starting to, to roll over and happen and businessofdesign.com launched in 2010. So a lot of people are just finding us and they're going, oh my God, like this, this new company. And prior to that, by the way, for five years, I had been lecturing live business of design. Oh. So it's taken a really long time for it to, to, to finally get a little momentum. And now I'll go on, I'll be on some Facebook group or something and I'll hear somebody um, tell people about a tr trade day. This is what I do. It's called trade day. And they, they, I, you know, they don't even know it's mine because everybody's just using it. So I'm like, yay. Yeah. So good. So it's good. crazy now, like 
even us, I mean, really, we started really, really slow and just, we've, we just put out what our 53rd or 54th or something like that. So it's just been over a year, but it's so crazy with these platforms, how accelerated it goes. Yeah. So that's, that's so exciting, but we, you know, you said something about being in the trenches and, Mm -hmm. um, that's what we love too. And that's, we we call it a podcast for designers by designers, Mm -hmm. because when we talk about like visibility, I'm sure you hear the same thing. You can't get that resistance because you're like, I'm, I'm doing these projects too. And this is how I do, I run them and it works every time. And same thing like with us where we hear people say, but I'm too busy. I'm a designer. And we're like, we're designers too. We have projects too. And this is a business and And we're doing this. And yeah. we're visible, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's really how you prioritize thing. I think there is something about being in the trenches that makes it like you were saying, super um, authentic. Yeah. And there's too many people, I think, teaching um, business of design who are not designers. And I listen to them and I think powder puff, you have no idea what you're talking. <laughs> like you just do not know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, the minute, like five minutes into the conversation, you're like, that person has not had a client in 22 years or that right. person never had a client. Right. And I don't care how smart you are. You cannot understand this business unless you've done it. It is so complicated. Yeah. And there are so many ways to get hurt and yeah. um, to, to really shoot yourself in the foot, like so many ways. So one of, one of my missions is to, you know, end the people who teach who shouldn't be teaching, like it bugs me. And I've laid down money for conferences and come away and thought, I got nothing out of that. Like, I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. So I'm, I'm all about supporting people like you guys who are, you know, out well, there. That's exactly why we bring an expert like you on because we are so talk about mission driven, even in our group, somebody will like trying to source and we're like, Oh, this is a visibility group. You know, we really, we really, because that's, we know what we know and we know we don't know. And we stay away from everything we don't know. We're like, you want to know about processes, you know, go over there. You want to know here, 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 furniture, (laughs) go over there, you know? So, I mean, not that we don't know it, but we don't know it. It's not our zone of genius. You know, right. so, um, yeah, I lo- that's why we love having you. We're like, we have to have Kimberly on because we just adore well, you. And, and she's saying. Kimberly. Come on. I mean, you are. You are Kimberly <laughs> Feldon. Like you were even saying, I'm, I was, that's you so know, funny. I had the show I and know. the editor and... <gasps> so... I'm just going to sit here with stars in my eyes. Oh, yeah. I know. We can just sit here and crush on you all day. Oh, yeah. you're so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> I want to know what you think our baby would look like. What the fifteen? I know. Yes, visibility would look like. So we had this question. I was writing down. I was thinking about all the things I know about you, and just from following you and doing the research, and and then I started thinking, what if her her fifteen step process and our visibility had a baby? What would that look like? <laughs> and I was like, and I, I was like, oh, should I send this or not? I was just you know, so worried about like, what is she going to think? Is she going to think like, what the heck is Rachel talking about? Um, but what would that look like if we took visibility and, and your process, I was sort of thinking, um, it would be cool. Like just even on Facebook live, I'm always looking for content. Cause you know, I did a yeah. year straight of Facebook lives. Right. So I'm like, where can I get some content? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times I have talked about some of the ways I work or some of the ways to work with me or my e-design process, or, you know, I've done something called, um, design demystified where I've had like clients come on and talk about their experience or something I've seen, like that. Yeah. You know, so I think it would be cool to actually like demystify what, a, what working, you know, through a project is with, you know, if you have a 15 step process and say, I think it would give confidence, right? Yeah. Like I have this process. Well, you know, I did a podcast recently where I interviewed our trades during a step 10 yes. and it was, it was madness behind the scenes. And I don't think the sound quality was that good, but people seem to resonate with it. So we were thinking like exactly like how could we actually bring a microphone at least into a, a real life experience in a way that, that people could hear, the audio would be great and you could hear it and mm-hmm. you could hear the, yeah. 
you know. Um, so gosh, yeah, we'd love to figure that out somehow. Well, and two, your visibility leads to the process being smoother because if you don't have a relationship with your trades, there's no way you're going to get them on trade day. You know, <laughs> every step along the way just goes so much better because you've talked to them, you've gotten out. So, and that would be more, I guess, the, the in-person stuff, but mm -hmm. the relationships that you have. Yeah. And it's really, it, it's, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, because if you don't have the systems, you'll never get to the visibility. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the visibility, you know, um, no one's going to, no one's going to hire you. <laughs> right. True that. How are people going to find you? <laughs> no, can't find you. <laughs> they find you and then you'll get Canadian fired. <laughs> 188 times. Oh my God. Oh my I was gosh. worried all the people who fired me so nicely would start their own Facebook group and like would be like, we fired Kimberly Sullivan. <laughs> so I had to do something and do something quick. That would be hysterical. Oh my gosh. The no, Facebook not group funny. Of... Not funny, Rachel. <laughs> You're like, no, only from the outside, not from, for, not from yeah. this perspective. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. I know that you're in the middle of renovating your space and you're busy and my, um, my hoodie, my, my hoodie. You're glamour. getting ready to in class. <laughs> Good for you. You're so Santa Monica. Oh my gosh. I know, right? I'm, like, I'm a designer. I just get up and look at, look at, at the ocean and go to spin class. No big it's deal. So funny that you said that because I, we get here, like we live in Santa Monica from January to May. And we live in Toronto from May, you know, end of May until uh, December. I have totally different wardrobe. It's like I, I actually am a different person. It's so weird. It's just so weird. That's so cool. Um, Why don't yeah, you do pretty. the opposite? I would think that you would want to be here during the cold. <laughs> no, it is. This is no, cold. Were you like right? that? This is winter, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you did. Right yes, 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 yes. I'm th I was thinking. This is winter in Santa Monica. <laughs> she was thinking May, but. So you get to yeah. enjoy like the fall out over there and everything. Oh, it's oh, that's nice. there. And the yeah. summer, the summer is fantastic in Toronto. It's great. I love it. And um, because I have one child there and one child here, I got to split my time, but I'm, got, I'm on a plane all the time. I have like, they know me on the Air Canada. It's like my, it's my commuter route. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want the regular? I kind of went, we have the regular coffee. Yeah, yes. They're like, yeah. that's great. Well, thank you again, Kimberly. Thanks, it's been so fun. Thanks, you guys. are. So will I see you this weekend in Las Vegas? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm we'll there. Dixie, about... I'm coming to Tennessee just to see you. There you oh, go. I would I love, love that. that. <laughs> it's it's beautiful I've been to here. Knoxville, but um, been to Nashville a few it's, times. To go we've back. got the Smoky Mountains over here, so it's even more beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, yes. Stunning. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we need to do a business of design, design and style trip to Nashville, Knoxville. Let's do it. 2019. Let's do it. Absolutely. See how that happens. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Okay. I said that there would be some squeeing. We didn't do it while Kimberly was here, but. That would be embarrassing, but we yeah, almost I did. Know. Thank goodness. We did. We kind of. We, she was pretty, she, she could tell we were pretty excited to talk to her. <laughs> can I, can I just do it now? Yes. <laughs> I feel much better now. Thank uh, you. iTunes listeners are like, thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't need my eardrums. <laughs> yeah. She's awesome. She's so smart and she's so funny yeah. and she's so real. And I just love how she talked about coming up with this. Cause I was like, how do you come up with this stuff? And it's just yeah. by, you know, trial and error trial and, and lots error. of error and she's mm -hmm. just super authentic about that error portion of it because you know there's you know I, I mean doesn't that make you feel better oh way like because I know I screw stuff up all the time and yeah. I think she even mentioned you know, you you talk to other designers and everything's fabulous everything's fabulous blah, blah, blah. my business is yeah. wonderful and yeah I get that you don't but you know what? Sometimes business sucks and you don't know how to fix it. And if yeah. you actually have the chance to talk to somebody who has been there and is willing to admit that they've made those mistakes and they're going to help you get out of it. <sighs> I know. And also stay tuned because we are going to do some collaborating with Kimberly and mm -hmm. the business of design this year and definitely in high point spring market. So we will be posting stuff as it comes, but we are so excited, and um, I think it was a great episode. I hope a lot oh. of people got to see it really. You know, Kimberly is a very smart 
uh, businesswoman and she, she does mean business. I mean, mm -hmm. when she has her, you know, she's no joke. So this was a very fun, light conversation with her. And, uh, I got to hear about, you know, I wanted to know about her design story. I didn't know. Um, so it was great to hear all those things she's done. I mean, she's amazing. She's incredible. And I can't wait to meet her in person. I know. Which we will. To be announced. To be. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye, guys. This podcast was made possible in part through the support of our preferred partners, like the Design Network. The Design Network offers one of the most powerful to-the-trade e-commerce programs in the furniture industry, combining the top brands in furniture, the best prices, and unparalleled logistics all in one place. Go to www.thedesignnetwork.com to join the Design Network's Trade Direct program, create your designer profile, connect with new clients, and start shopping today.